Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to uh, the final part of our formal Leap Texas webinar series, although we're going to be doing some additional webinars throughout the rest of the summer that um, will be coming from our, some of our presenters as well and some folks as well that weren't going to be presenting, uh, just an additional webinar. So please do keep an eye out for additional emails from us. Um, uh, we've got a couple of great presenters here today um, that are going to be talking about um, uh, lunchbox math strategies to help students master math skills. So I think this will be a really great presentation. Um, so at this time, I'm going to stop talking and uh, hand it off to uh, Barbara and Sarah uh, to to give us a great presentation today. All right. Well, I hope everybody is ready for this. You've got myself. My name is Sarah Thurmond. I am a success coach and freshman seminar instructor at the University of Houston, Victoria. And you also have Dr. Barbara Patton. I'll let her finish her intro. And I'm a professor with the School of Education. And uh, after many years of teaching, I'm joining with the success coaches down, downstairs and uh, teaching with the freshmen, which is really giving me a new look on life after teaching graduate students for many years. But we have a lot of fun. The students have kind of come to find out that Sarah's like their big sister and I'm kind of their adopted grandmother. And we have a lot of fun going with these. And uh, between the two of us, we think we're doing pretty good. And we've had a lot of compliments from the students. Please, if you have questions, let us know because we're glad to help you. And if you think of something after the presentation later, we'll be glad to get back with you on email or phone and work with you too and share some of our ideas that we've been working with. We don't say everything works, but we're trying. We're Sarah? definitely willing to try everything. And the students, they've come to really appreciate how Dr. Patton and I work together. A lot of times we will combine our classes and they just have a ball. I'll write on the top of the whiteboard. She writes on the bottom of the whiteboard and we try That's to make because I'm really short. <laughs> <laughs> they laugh about our height too. <laughs> we try to make it really fun and exciting and entertaining as much as possible and one of the things that we have found is that the more interactive and more casual we can make our interactions with the students the better off they are so that is where this idea for the lunchbox math came from we were actually on our way to a different conference we were on the flight and we wrapped up a presentation for that conference got everything ready and we're like you know our students are really they're really struggling what can we do and on a napkin no joke we're on the plane riding on a napkin and that is how lunchbox math was born and we came up with this idea for a way to have lunch with the students and come up with simple ways for them to ask questions and interact with us in a less formal environment. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. And with Lunchbox, we found out that it's usually a smaller group and it varies from time to time. So it's not necessarily one person or one person that wants to be the center of attention because it's varying like i said so many times a lot of times when we have these and not every time but i might bring in brownies or cookies and sarah will do the same thing so we we've got it pretty casual yeah you know, and they they've come to say hey did you bring that we like that they're they're not bashful about asking what they want to eat either definitely not <laughs> here's our contact information um so make sure you uh get that if you like if you want to contact us uh our emails are always our last name first initial and then uhv.edu because we're at the university of houston victoria 
Oh. It's a little I'm slow transition on your side, but it's going. If you email us, we'll be glad to phone you if that would be easier to visit too. So, we found, like I said, the students love to eat and to visit. We let them bring their own lunch and then we just usually provide just an extra little snack. And like we said, it's really casual. We'll provide packets, but there's no formal us up on the whiteboard or lesson plan. The, they come with a lot of their own questions. And we found that it's it's really helpful, especially for the freshmen, that they can see us um, outside of the classroom where they know we're people, not just professors. We have found that the students, the gap between where they're sitting and having somebody up at the whiteboard is extremely huge to our freshman students and especially the students we teach who are TSI incomplete in math. Um, most of you are probably familiar with the Texas Success Initiative or the TSI assessment, which helps students determine whether or not they're college ready. And so the students in our class are TSI incomplete in mathematics, or in other words, not prepared for college math. So they have a lot of questions and getting them to ask questions during class, it's kind of like pulling teeth. It might even be worse than going to the dentist for some of these students. <laughs> so what we've come up with is just very casual, getting them there with food, letting them see us as human beings, their big sister or their grandma, or just somebody that they can confide in on campus and becoming an extra resource. So many of our students are so low in math, they really do not know what they're low in, I guess you'd say, because fractions are such an integral part of almost everything. Fifth, sixth grade math, uh, fractions is beyond a lot of them at this time, and yet they don't want to admit that they're trying to do something else, but they don't know the bottom parts or the beginning work so we really have to work on that and this casual approach seems to be helping a lot because we're putting those missing pieces in so then they can work some of the problems now this semester i've had contemporary math and last semester i had college algebra uh and i think it was the opposite last semester wasn't it sarah yeah it was opposite yeah Hopefully they're going to be able to pass this math math. And if they pass, then they can keep going. Sarah, you gonna tell them about what we we're trying to get them to do? So what one of the things we do with our freshman seminar classes, and one of the biggest things is they are paired with the gateway math course. And so the students are enrolled in both college algebra, contemporary math, finite math, and then this freshman seminar math course that's designed to provide extra support and build in those foundation pieces. And with that, we've added extra things like the lunchbox math so that we can build in that support that they need since they're not college ready. And one of the things we like to do is not just get the students math help, but because while that is one of the biggest things to passing math, it also comes along with things like study skills and time management and the ability to self-advocate and ask questions. And so those are also things that we work on in the lunchbox math and it's little things, little pieces of encouragement or advice that we can try to offer to the students to bring them up to speed in a sense and make that adjustment from being 
high school student to college student to becoming a college ready student. And we really do try to do a lot of different things with our students. And so while UHV does offer lots of assistance, the Success Center that I work in, we have several different types of things. We have peer tutoring, we have supplemental instruction, we have the success coaches, we have success advocates, and we even have a curriculum and instruction developer who works with faculty to try to get faculty more involved with helping students. Uh, other things we have on campus, we have the library and we have career counseling and health education. And we have tons of different support for the students on campus, but we found that it doesn't always meet the needs of these at-risk students that aren't quite college ready. And so that's why we try to make sure we're there to help connect them to anything else that they might need on campus or be that resource that they need if UHB doesn't have something specific for them. Do you want to add to any of that, Barbara? I think we're okay there. The only thing uh, I do need to add in there is we try to do our, our sessions on the same day as they have either their, their math that's connected or the freshman seminar day, our lunchbox. And we we do them right maybe after class, uh, something, but we, some of the students do travel because we're not all the students are living in the dorm. And so we try to make it as easy for them as if they are traveling back and forth, if they don't have to come to campus still another time, many of them drive 40, 50 miles one way to campus. So we try to work around as many things like that as we can. And we have those excellent tutors and the tutors that we generally have that Sarah was talking about. These are students that are virtually their age. And so they can really relate with them. And they're also <laughs> students that have taken the class before done well, they had to get an A in the class, they had to be referred by the instructor of the class and they have to maintain a 3.5 GPA or higher. So these are students that have proven that they're really good at not only the subject material, but being a student in general and they can help us mentor the students. So like Dr. Patton was saying, the class meets twice a week for us. Um, so our math classes typically meet Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then the freshman seminar classes meet on Tuesday, Thursday. And that way the students have someone from the math co-requisite team all week long. So they always have access to support. And then we mirror that with the lunchbox math where we're meeting on typically a Thursday, but we do adjust depending on what's going on that week or different events that are being offered. But like we said, we like to bring cookies or brownies or snacks. I know Dr. Patton makes her deviled eggs and the students go crazy for them. And I can't lie, they are good. And so we always have something to snack on, some kind of food for them and just really give it a very like laid back feeling where kind of like you're just going to a friend's house to eat some snacks and chit chat and we like to then bring in different math techniques so it can be as simple as they have homework due and their homework is on exponent exponential rules or functions or even logarithmic functions and we might just be going over the exponential rules or logarithmic properties it might be how to add and subtract fractions so we really try to pick just one or two techniques that 
or concepts that the students are working on that week that we we know or the math instructors have told us that the students are struggling with and just go over just a few things keeping it casual and not trying to jam pack an entire study session into this lunch and learn lunchbox math we've also used the laptop and gone through uh some of the things that are on the web to show them that there are resources if you're not on campus like at 10 o'clock at night if you need something check out this because you can find other things and it's not that we're trying to dodge teaching but we're trying to show them you know how to gather information and to work and it's so far it's been proving pretty good you know one thing Sarah mentioned that the, the classes their math is usually Monday Wednesday Friday and our freshman seminar uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays when we first started this we had them all on the same day and the students were just exhausted when it was two days or three days and Sarah and I kind of fussed a little bit I guess with the rest of the team and going on that we thought that they if they had a little bit of math every day rather than a big dose you know twice a week or something but had a little bit every day it would work better and it should it really has proven to be good that with them connecting every day it's been looking a lot better for them I don't think it's as scary either All right, so All right. what we'll talk about next are some of the advantages of what has been dubbed our lunchbox gang. So what we okay. found is, oh, I'm sorry. It, okay, one of the first things we found was that it was less math anxiety. This is, pair with us is kind of hard when we're 35 or 40 miles apart working on this. But what we were talking about was that we realized that they did have a lot of anxiety. Well, to start with, we thought we would give you what is a textbook, I guess you'd say, definition of anxiety. And we saw that, which very much was, we saw that those disorders came in as panic attacks, obsessive compulsive, uh traumatic stress uh to the point that they weren't able to work they were almost to the point they were crying or things so we found that working with this it really did help sarah all right i think it switched over I think it jumped one, but I'm not sure. But the communication skills, we found that because they were in a small group, okay, let's go. They were in a small <laughs> group. Jumping on me. <laughs> okay, sorry. You wanna talk some more about anxiety? I was trying to, but it keeps Okay, go ahead and do it. that. Then we'll get to the next one. It keeps jumping to communication, so I'm going to go ahead and leave the slide here, but just give a brief intro to some of the things we've seen on anxiety. So with the anxiety, what we've noticed is that students aren't always showing anxiety in typical formats. So anxiety can come across as the class clown. It can be where they're trying to show off or divert the attention away from the math so that you're not seeing that the student can't do the math. It could be the student is not asking questions, not showing up to class, uh, acting like they don't need to go to class. They might say, oh, I don't need to come to class. I've got this. That's also a form of anxiety. And it can be some of the typical things we've seen, just not doing homework or not doing the quizzes, not paying attention in class or multitasking. Everyone loves their cell phone, right? We, we, we've done a pretty good job getting cell phones out of our classroom, but um, 
or making like building them into the lectures making them part of it so even if they do have their cell phone out it becomes part of the lecture that they need to use as a tool or a resource as opposed to playing a game or checking Facebook or being on Snapchat, things like that. And so a lot of the anxiety isn't, is mass. It's kind of hidden. They like to hide their anxiety from us. And these students have become really good at it. And so it becomes our job as instructors to figure out why, maybe why, not just why they're not doing their homework, but why they have that anxiety. Where does it come from? Is it really that they don't know how to do the math or is it because they had a teacher growing up who said they were bad at math? Is it because mom couldn't do math so I can't do math? type things and so we've seen a lot of different types of anxieties and a lot of different ways that students try to hide it from us and it's funny how if you can get them to come in small groups um, for their like the lunchbox math or maybe it's just a special instructor-led tutoring session something like that they'll open up a lot more when it's just one or two people around as opposed to 25 in a class. We've also found when we're working with them, we don't go in one of the offices. In our particular building, there's a little cul-de-sac, so to say, that has a table where just different ones will sit and work. And we've been using that so it's not, the environment is very inviting and non-intimidating. So this has helped a lot too. But the anxiety, you name it, and we've seen it just about. Sometimes it's every semester. We had one guy that was just a class clown the whole semester and the second semester also. And the poor guy was just trying to hide because he had didn't have a clue what was going on. It was really sad but just the nicest, sweetest guy. And Dr. Patton helped him get through it. Oh, we made it. We tried, but we it was, a, it was something. Okay, if anyone has any questions, if y'all can figure out how to, to let us know, we'll be glad to try to answer them. Communication skills. Well, when I was looking up, trying to find out what did they really talk about communication skills, all I could really find was this was the way that they were going to interact with someone, but they really didn't have a whole lot of ideas of communication skills fancier than what we would talk about. But once we got to working with our students and talking and why we say they had increased communication skills, they were in this casual environment and they started being able to talk. They might have used lingo words that weren't traditional math words or mathy words, but we found out that they got, they were just talking and they were communicating and we knew and they knew what they were talking about. And then we were able, because of their, freedom, I guess you'd say, of their informal communication, we got to seeing that we could help them more with content because it wasn't the class proper math content in general. Sarah? And I think we've seen that our way of communicating with the students has really shifted and changed. So we, in our class, will go over vocabulary we even have uh we've made crosswords and word searches and different types of puzzles and things for the students to do where they have to look up a definition or a math word to be able to solve the puzzle and doing different things like that has really helped the students be able to transform their um, math slang, I guess is the term we could use for it, or their informal ways of speaking so that they can 
really learn to understand their math professors who really do tend to stick to the traditional math vocabulary and language. But you know, it's helped us too, Sarah and myself, because we began to recognize some of the words that they're talking about. So in general, it's a two way street on this because we had the more formal, they had the informal and now they're understanding more of the formal and we're understanding more of the informal. So we're actually, it's increasing the communication skills on both ends for us. Yeah. Self-esteem. Self-esteem is, is defined according to the dictionary, uh, Wikipedia, okay? Is an individual sub, uh, subject evaluation of their own worth. And self-esteem can uh, encompasses beliefs about their self and it, as well as the emotional states, such as triumph, despair, pride, and even shame. So we're trying to get over that shame and despair and we're trying to help them reach triumph and pride. And when you'd be surprised, I guess, and when you see some of them, when they do master that problem, it may take two pages and have scribbles everywhere, but when they get down to the end and they have it, they may not have gone the traditional route that Sarah or myself would have gone, but they get there and it's real good because they see that there are many different routes to go. Sarah? Yeah, we've yeah. seen students really transform and change their entire outlook and attitude towards math and school in general, just based on the simple act of figuring out one concept it can totally go from i don't deserve to be here i can't do college to all of a sudden there's a huge smile on their face and they're walking down the hall with their head up and the instructors in other classes english bio whatever will come and say hey so and so their performance in my class has just changed so much and they said it's because of lunchbox math or it's because of Dr. Patton or it's because of Sarah or your class or the skills you've given them. And they'll come tell us and it's not just better self-esteem in math, it's really how it's, it kind of changes their entire outlook and belief in themselves, just being able to, to like conquer something that really had defeated them before. We've also heard from some of the other professors going on, what did you take them to eat? Do you have anything left? And saying, <laughs> because the students are bragging, at first they're bragging about what they had to eat. And we can tell that with their body language that they're beginning to get that self-esteem built. They're working, but like I said, they they enjoy what they're eating and go, and, but it's helping them all over. And you can look at their body language as they're walking down the hall. And that's when we're seeing other professors talk about, what'd y'all do to them? What'd y'all do today? Because <laughs> they just flipped over a new leaf, so to say. We've even had English professors come and join us because they don't understand these dang multiples or whatnot. And really they're just coming to get Dr. Pat brownies, but they'll come and join us and hang out and try to learn some math with the students. And that's been really good because then they realize that not everybody has so many math skills. And the one, uh, person from English that's joined us so many times. They, they, he's a real casual person. They love him dearly, but they're finding out, hey, if he doesn't understand, then the fact I don't understand, it's not such a big deal. I can, I can tackle it. And so they're really trying harder, I think. Self-motivation, 
when you think of self-motivation, you know, we think about what is that, but what it really comes down to is getting started on your own. And with these students that are TSI incomplete, they can find 501, or maybe it's 99 or 1,001 reasons why they can't get started. But if, but these little things we're going with and we're giving them these little tips and trying to teach them that you don't wait to the last minute and try to study for four hours straight and do all these cram sessions, it's really showing them that they can get started and they're willing to get started instead of waiting to the last minute to try to study. I have been preaching almost about that you learn so much more in small increments. I've been trying to tell them research showing it. It's not just Dr. Patton trying to tell you, but if you study in small increments, you enjoy, you enjoy it more, you learn more and you retain more. So do 15 minutes here, do 15 minutes there. Don't try to do a five hour cram session or study all night and then go in so tired the next morning you can barely write your name on your paper. Sarah? And it's funny, if you really have picked these skills up um, even to the point where students are coming to tutoring more or going to instructor office hours more uh, because they know they can't wait until the last minute. And it's even little things where we're like, we'll put a, an example on the whiteboard and say, do you guys want to try this before we go over it? And they'll say yes. They'll say yes, they want to try. They want to they want to see what they know. And then we'll go over it together in a class. So we don't have the traditional experience where you ask students a question in math or say, hey, do you guys understand this? And you turn around and there's crickets chirping. You know, they they try and right or wrong, or even if they go off on some tangent in the middle, you know, they're they're trying and they're not just sitting there looking at a problem saying, well, I don't know how to do it. We are finding they are really starting and trying, just confidence. We've also seen, like with this next one, the better networking skills with their peers. Do you have a definition oh. for this one? Let's see, where's my net networking? Well, we all know that networking is working with others and how to find others, maybe not the, maybe going beyond your usual one. And with networking skills, we we talk, think of not just working with others, but we have active listening, we have social skills, we have public speaking, we have nonverbal communication. Nonverbal communication is so important to try to help these students because they we're trying to get them to learn not only their math skills, but also don't come across like that as so negative if you're trying to look for a job, which is one of our skills that we're trying to teach in our freshman seminar class. The networking, of course, would be empathy, positively, and definitely just communicating in general. And we do a lot of group work in this class, and it can be minor group work as far as a project in class or the way we have our classroom set up is different than a traditional classroom. Our classroom is set up with a series of small islands and it has whiteboards around three walls of the room. So we spend a large majority of our time in class with the students at the whiteboard working together and they've really done good as far as communicating with each other and even if somebody does something wrong they they're not rude about it it used to be that the students if before we started the lunchbox math that the students could get kind of snippy with each other where or kind of catty where they they'd kind of pick on each other 
for being rude. And Dr. Patton and I do not deal with that. That doesn't fly in our class. And they've learned that really quickly. But once we started the lunchbox map and the students started meeting together more and more on their own and not even just like people within the same class, but we have four different freshman seminar classes. So we have students from the different freshman seminar classes coming together and they've really found better ways to communicate with each other saying, you know, well, that's not the way I remember working it. Look, this is how I work it. And they've really adjusted the, the way that they communicate with each other and with us, I think. We've gotten a lot better com communication coming from the students after doing this lunchbox math. And with our group work, when we're like Sarah was explaining our our classroom setup, um, at one time when, before we started this, it was not necessarily bullying, but it was almost borderline bullying, I would say, about when we would try to do group work, if someone would do something wrong, they weren't, I mean, you were out there on your own, even though you were on a team or whatever. Now, they're getting to point that, oh, you got that wrong. Let me help you. And, and they'll jump up to the board right quick and erase if one of them's wrong and try to put it in because it's more like these old fashioned uh, third grade spelling bees almost because they're all they're wanting their team to win. They're wanting their team to be right. And they're they just got a lot of companionship. Uh, like I said, the networking, the companion uh, bonding is what I would say too. And I'm sure that y'all have been in the same situation we have, that our dorms were closed. I, I, let me back up, our dorms weren't closed. Our students could stay, but they also could go home. And most of them did go home. But right off, I had several write me and say, can we do this together? Can we do that? We're over here in one place. And I'm thinking, oh gosh, I hope y'all are wearing masks and all that. But anyway, they were working together and they were poor, poor pooling, excuse me, pooling their resources to work. And they seem to be having a lot of fun from the questions and things that they would send me back and forth when they were working on their work. And I think it all goes back to that networking of the casual lunchbox. Better organization for this class and others. Well, when they came in at first, many of those students, they walked in with like the new fifth grader with their brand new binder and all this. And then in a week's time, it was all over the place and whatever. But we've started finding that they're organizing, they're being able to take better notes. They're, we do stress note taking skills and all but then we come back and piggyback on those in the class in the in the lunch box and so they're finding out it's okay if you're taking notes if you draw a star over on the side or you draw a sun smiley face or something to keep you going and we've also heard like we were talking about the, the professor from the english class he's talking about they're putting their notes together better we're just saying in general, they're organized and they are putting it. And when we talk about organization skills, we also need to think about that some of the buzzwords might be that they're keeping deadlines. They're not necessarily delegating, but they are being able to delegate within their self-delegations, what I would call it, because they're beginning to realize we have to do this and this and how to work with it. They have goals and they're setting those goals. They're making decisions, they're managing appointments, they're not showing up all the time late when they have an appointment with a professor, they're beginning to get better with that, but the team and working with their projects, they were just overall put together much more than many, many others. Sarah? Yeah, they've done yeah. wonders. It's amazing what just meeting with them a little extra outside of class seems to have done as far as um, the self-delegation, which a lot of we prioritizing is 
the term we use in class a lot and they'll prioritize and they color code and we have found that just like the rest of us the students love checking something off that list they love it so if they can say okay math homework done english essay done and they really like making those lists and checking things off or they'll set reminders on their phones they love using technology so they can set reminders on their phones or on their tablets and then they same thing they get to say that's complete and it's worked for them in both the math and their other classes all of the math instructors have reported this semester that the students have completed more of their homework this semester and this is after uh, like one and a half semesters of us doing this lunchbox math than they have any other semester before they're getting more and more of their homework done When we talk about better management skills for the future, part of our freshman seminar is the fact that we need to talk about what are they going to do in the future. And so we, you know, we work with this and their management skills show and they start looking at their careers. And I think that's with their next slide too. But we start looking at careers. We start looking at, at what's they may say they want to do that and then when they go and find out what that career is involved they say oh i didn't want to do that so this is something one example is one young lady in uh, my section uh wanted to do something with kinesiology and she wanted to do physical therapy when she finishes her degree and all and then she found out that it was everything she looked at was a specialized and she said, that's not what I want to do. I want to look at the whole person. I don't want to just look at shoulders. And so we, you know, she was managing and working her skills to where that she can focus as she's taking her other classes on what she wants to do and work. So it's really paying off that they are beginning to be able to network, network, um, go search and help each other search because they're finding out, yes, we did want to do that, or no, we didn't. And I'm going to combine this with our next slide that, that actually talks about better career searching skills, because one of the things we've really pushed in our freshman seminar class is searching for careers and characteristics and things that they're looking for in the future we do a budget project that helps them look at their money management now and how they can adjust that in the future and then they actually do a full-blown career engagement project and they do this with a partner that has a similar major or career outcome goal and they go to the library several times throughout the semester and do research and the students have just really learned so much about asking questions and that it's okay to not ask the right question the first time because that question might lead to more questions or to more answers and they've learned that they can come to us to career services to their other instructors and go to the library and google in different places to really hone those skills as far as management for themselves and all of it is looking forward so they're all looking forward whether it's self-management or education management career management even looking for internships and different things that you know allow them to see why they're taking this math class or why they're taking this English class or whatnot and apply the skills they're learning towards their goals in the future. On their budget project, basically what we had them do, and it wasn't, I guess it wasn't like a future budget, it was a look at what I'm doing. So they had to keep for two weeks, they had to keep a, a record of everything that came in and went out. 
And so if they got a birthday, you know, happen to have a birthday and their aunt sent them some money, well, they put that in, what they started with and all this. And it was amazing the the results or the little uh, reflection when they finished. A couple of them said, I've got to quit eating out. All I'm doing is spending my money eating out. I had no idea I was doing that. She said, I'm in the dorm and I have a meal plan. Why am I doing that? I'm wasting money. And it was several more that came out with little things. And they, they really began, began to realize what they were doing. And it didn't necessarily, you know, we didn't say it was right or wrong, but we wanted them to just be aware of it so they can. And one of them said, I'll never get a nice new car or I'll never get this. If I keep doing that, I've got to change my life. <laughs> so we did, you know, it made a, made a big impact on a lot of them. One of the funniest ones I read, I just laughed and laughed at this this semester. One of the students said, you know, I earned $450 these two weeks. I spent 775. If I would have just stopped eating out, I could have been rich like Beyonce. And it was, just, it was just so serious and so candid. I just laughed and she said, I know what I'm going to do now in the future. I'm going to put this much money straight in a savings account. And they do. They start thinking about how they can adjust and really work on overall life skills just based on these little things. And we did see so much that they were able to put thoughts in words. And not that they couldn't put a lot, but they began to be able to be more of a professional. And I don't mean that they were ready to go out into the workforce and all that, but they, were, they began to be able to talk and to think about how could we do this so that we will be able to be successful with other things. Yeah, we've really seen improvements in, I would say, especially their ability to write emails, because I know I used to get a lot of emails where the student would say, I have a question. And I'm like, that's great. I do too. Who are you? What's your question? <laughs> you know, and they've gotten much better at saying, even if it's, hey, Sarah, I know I'm failing this class. What can I do to improve my grade? okay i can work with that right that's so much better than i have a question <laughs> and so we've seen that come to life and even i would say it's almost more than the ability to put thoughts into words they realize that they really can ask professors those questions they can advocate for themselves and that's one of the biggest things we try to teach them is that as you're becoming an adult, as you're making this transition, mom, dad, grandma, big sister, whoever is not going to be there all the time to ask the questions for you and take care of something for you. Sometimes you have to do that yourself. And so they've, they've adapted and come up with better ways of putting their thoughts into the work into words and advocating for themselves and asking questions and it could just be i know some of them that and they'll be very honest i didn't do this homework because i was working you know can i have a couple days extension i'll make sure i'll do it now you know things like that we can work with that and we can help them when it comes comes to giving extensions or working on homework or whatnot if they can like communicate with us and that's really what lunchbox math has been able to do is help them learn how to communicate with instructors because they start to see them as real people versus just that person at the front of the classroom you know or that person that they only see tuesday and thursday from 11 to 12. it's it's becoming much more than that. The lunchbox math seems to have made them, like Sarah said, so much more comfortable visiting with us. 
because it's, you know, and I know, uh, say in February, January and February of this semester, it's amazing how many of the students from a year ago that I, and it just happened in a cluster. So that I saw, it seems like every other day I would see five or 10 of the students that I had a year ago. And hey, what's going on? How are you? What's going on? This and that. And I have a little service dog. Well, actually I have two and they rotate who goes to work. And so they're, you know, when they see me in the hall, it's, hey, what's going on? Who you have today? And working with them. And so this has also given them a lot to do. And they've become very comfortable with asking and talking. And I think at first they started talking to my little dog more than me, but you know, they know that they're not supposed to touch her. So they didn't try, but it's just really interesting how they work and how they, they're going. And one of them happened to sit this semester across the table from another one. And she said, I had no idea they had a law school there. You know, I might consider that. I've got kids and I really need to have a better career than the one I was looking for. Maybe I need to think about that. So we're, we're seeing more and more. They're putting their thoughts in words, they're sharing, and they're just overall, we think they're becoming better and they're going to be better able to meet the world. I don't think we're, we're turning out a bunch of burger flippers. I think they're going to be a lot better students and, and have a better chance at careers. And I'm not saying burger flippers are bad. I'm just saying I don't want them to have to be a burger flipper because they can't do anything else. All right. Our evaluation was very uh, informal. And we haven't really taken a written evaluation on this. We do need to, but this was in a more or less a trial situation. And we were just started out shooting in the dark, trying to let people know what could go on. Sorry, we didn't have a real formal evaluation. We do need to do that. Disadvantages, what did we find, Sarah? We did, uh, we didn't find any disadvantages, honestly. The students that are coming have all had extremely positive feedback. And like I said, we've gotten feedback from other instructors as well. And that has also been extremely positive since this is gonna be the end of our first full semester with our lunchbox math and part of it has gone online. We still have continued even with the online format. Our survey data may be a little skewed at the end of this semester, but hopefully at the end of next fall, it'll be a little more cohesive and concise. Do anyone have any questions? Does anyone have a question? One of the disadvantages I did hear that one of the students said, oh my gosh, we're all gonna gain weight if we keep doing this. But that's the only one that didn't have any academic. Uh, that is true. Disadvantages. I heard a couple of students say that, but you know, there are worse things, right? Yeah, we're totally open to questions. If you guys have any questions, please let us know. We'd be more than happy to chat with anybody about how this came about. And again, we actually created this on a plane, on a napkin, as we were flying to a different conference. Um, and it was, we were reviewing the results from a survey we had given in class, just talking to the students about how they thought the class was going. And the, the students were saying, you know, we want more math. <laughs> Surprisingly, they wanted more math. They wanted more math from us. They wanted more math help. And so we knew we had a very short period of time in class with them. And so this is one of the concepts we came up with.
and I saw that we had a question about the the games that we use in class and yes definitely we can share that information like I said we've created crosswords and word searches we do a lot of puzzles and Legos and different things in class things that take them back to a different time where it's not necessarily always so serious but then after they have fun and play the games they get to evaluate themselves in a more serious light the puzzles that we used were uh, plain old jigsaw puzzles and we let them get into groups and work them and at and they had most of the class when we were doing them in the classroom rather than at, then we took it to the math uh, lunchbox but we let them work and it was amazing because they found out very quickly that different ones some of them looked for the color some looked for the borders some look some divided the puzzle up and they had this many pieces and you have this many pieces and they found out at the end they virtually all came out about the same amount uh, solved or put together and they found out that this was so good because they learned that different things work you don't have to have a single strategy you can use many strategies and what not one is necessarily better than the other each person has their own learning style and it's fine you go at it as long as you reach the end and you're correct what does it make what difference does it make how you got there as long as it was legal and we said that we were joking <laughs> with them they had a lot of fun with the puzzles some of them even asked me could they that they had some some kind of glue and they wanted to know could they take it home and glue it and put it in their in their bedroom or something because they had finished it and it was a very pretty puzzle if we have no other questions thank you so much for coming and please make sure that you write us if you would like if you have questions and you think about them later we'll be glad to try to help you and share yes and we'll make sure that jeff gets all of this information Thanks, Jeff. Thank you.